Okay, so I have a variety of objects here. I have a shell, which is pretty cool, a conch shell. I have, uh, I have a, um, a black cube and a white cube. You can get, this is hollow, but you can get these um, at Joann's. I got a plaster cast, which I got from Dick Blix, which was broken. Um, and I told them, and they said, oh, okay, we'll send you another one. So they sent me another one, and then I fixed this one. So <laughs> two. I have two plaster casts now. And I have this skull, which is pretty fragile. And it's like, I don't know, what is it? it is it a deer? A deer skull, maybe? I'm not well-versed in animal anatomy, but I think, I don't know what it is. At any rate, I thought it looked cool sitting up like this in the background. But with those, with these few objects, and you want to have an, un, an odd number of objects. I won't block it all. I just want to put the objects there so that I can talk more about the um, the actual process. So I want to design. I want to do thumbnails for a still life because I want to do a complex still life that's going to um, be used for the final project. And I'm going to make this thing a little bit smaller. Oh, baby, don't cry. Baby, don't cry. Okay, all right. <laughs> She's hitting you? <laughs> Ungrateful child. Of course. All right. Oh, you've got Mike. Cool. <laughs> so if you're going to do a lot of um, drawing, I recommend taking some old mat board and cutting it. Like you can get, take a piece of mat board that's a regular mat and then just cut it into two L-shaped pieces so you can have a, a viewfinder. This will allow you to frame out your still life. Like so. So I can, you know, I could make it smaller. I could do this. I could make it broader. So it kind of helps you get like an idea of your picture frame and what kind of setup you want to have. So have that at hand. And then the other thing you'll do, you'll want to do is to, whoa, <laughs> I look like this warmed over with this light in front of me. Take, I've got several objects. How am I going to set them up? I want to set them up so that I have like a dynamic um, still life that's interesting. Actually, almost anything I do to this thing is going to be interesting. So on the one hand, I've got this guy here, this, and then I've got, if I just leave it the way it is, I've got a shell, I've got the box, I've got another box, and I've got the skull kind of sticking up behind it. So and really, I should do it it's much smaller. So if you're going to do thumbnails, I'm going to do a vertical. Pretty sure I'm going to do a vertical layout. So I just wanted to um, get some ideas. I'm setting up a still life. Sometimes it's more, it's a, well, I could go into really crazy art speak and talk about the meaning of objects and and all this, but I like anatomy. And actually, yeah, I can make some real interesting connections on, a, on an academic level that, well, I've got a bone and I've got a shell and I've got a human torso, so I've got humans and animals and denizens of the sea. So um, I also could say that this is plaster, which is a hard substance. So they're all pretty hard substances. I want to make an interesting arrangement. Sometimes you just have to move stuff around and look at it. I know that's a little bit blown out. 
color-wise, but I'll fix that later. I like the idea of something. Oh, you see, I looked at it, and I can see something even better. I think it would be better. That kind of echoes. See how the lines kind of echo each other? So because the skull goes this way, and the, the torso that goes this way. Oh, man, this is going to look cool. It's going to look much cooler than I expected. I've got the got the horns here, got the eye here. So when you're doing your thumbnails, you just want to rough them in so that you're not spending a ton of time on the object. Now maybe I want to change this out for a cube. I'm getting some blowback light. You don't want to get an additional, see how there's an additional shadow here? That's happening because of that. So you want to make sure that you you keep your light source isolated when you're doing a still life. So this one skull goes like this. Block. I'm still getting a lot of curvature this way, so maybe I will try. What do you think, Joe? Tell me what you think. Is Joe still here? Yeah, Joe's still here. What do you think of the concept? Here's the skull. Here's the block. Here's the so this now this does this thing where it goes like this object goes like this, and this object goes like this. I think I like that a lot. I'm not sure about this though. This isn't really working. And I'm not sure what to use instead. I thought the blocks would be okay, but I think they're way too big. So I have a few more objects that I can pull out. I, I just collect weird objects from different places to utilize as... <laughs> this is funny. I'll try this one. Oh, I get this one. my standard go-to. I'm not going to use that one. Maybe I'll use got a lot of options here. And sometimes you just have to play with it until you get something that you like. Now, I don't know what that would represent. See, it no longer has the, the same kind of um, philosophical. Oh, I was asking what you think of this setup. That could be kind of fun. Uh, but now I've got a lot of curving objects. I was talking about the angles of the objects going, like the skull goes this way and the, the cast goes this way. And then I got something right here. And yeah, I'm trying to get some continuities, make something interesting. So I had this in there. I'm kind of torn between the idea of using something that is, the light is just way too bright, using something that is has a some kind of a significance, you know, like a um, connection. The, all these things are made out of hard objects, and the horn, the skull has horns, and so does the so does the shell, and the the figure it echoes the, yeah. And I also have, I could throw some grapes in there. <laughs> but there's no reason for the grapes. There's no good, there's no good excuse for the grapes. Um, one of my standard go-tos is a wine glass because I love drawing glass. So I'm going to grab myself a wine glass over here that I find attractive. Got a couple. Let's see if one of these would be suitable. Uh, I don't think. Do I want to do color? I may do color. Get this one. And now that's an interesting glass. Uh, 
have all these antique glasses. And then I have some really crappy glasses that I just bought. So I tend to use whatever I have around my house for interesting items. Whoa. That one's not happy. I'll take you out. And it could be something, maybe the glass, glass, a hard substance, and it's silicon, but it's also transparent. So it could be delicate. Ah, I'm not sure. But the best thing to do is just to try a bunch of different things and look at them and think about them and look at them in your viewfinder. Okay, I'm back so I can read that. Uh, this is the final... For this, this is for the um, FND 110. This is the, the complicated still life, the final still life. It's probably way too complicated, but I um, I like to challenge myself, even if I can't challenge my students. So that's really hard to see. I could put a liquid in it. This would be just like a standard glass. Which is maybe a nice, interesting refraction through the glass to the figure behind it. This is totally different glass, which is a nice splash of color. Ooh, and it's got a nice color on the horn, too. What do you think of the red one? And I could put a dark liquid in it, and it would look like blood. But what would be what would be the reasoning for it? I've got this one is pink. Got that sucks. This is a watermelon color. That's a lot more delicate. <laughs> Macabre. Well, yeah. Macabre is sort of my middle name. But I'm really digging the... I, I probably won't try any other combination of the... Unless I swap them. I could try the skull and the... And the... Um, I could swap these, see how that looks. I go like this. And then maybe like this. I definitely like the skull sitting back on its horns. Nope, that doesn't do anything for me. So I can definitely put something in the front embraced by the horns. What would it be? If you guys have any ideas, go ahead and chime in. Sometimes it's hard to make art in a vacuum. Maybe a piece of bone china. Or <sighs> I do have some lovely little teacups. Oh, 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 I got an idea. I got an idea. This may not may not make any sense to anybody but me, but <laughs> okay, so my grandfather's last name was Fraser, which is a Scottish name. And the family crest on the Fraser is as you can see, a deer. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I love the torso. The torso is awesome. I could put a kilt on him. I'll put him back this way. Oh, careful. I like it better this way because I want to see the eye socket. And I always put space behind it so that it can get a depth of a sense of depth. T, anyone? I don't know. Is that a little too... Maybe it's a little too... Uh, oh, my kitsch. <laughs> I'm going to have to... I think I'm going to have to use the shell. It's the only one that really makes any sense. 
It really is the only thing that makes any sense to me. Now, we could add some more drapery. I could cover that cardboard box a little bit. And you know how much I love drapery. It's too bad I don't have a dead fish or something. I want if I wanted to paint a dead fish, I would think that would be really cool. trying to get rid of there. I think I got it. I think I got rid of the shadow on the box, or the light on the box. So do it a little bit. How does this work? Stupid tripods? There. Whoa. Could look at that. <laughs> Earl Grey. <laughs> sweetly. Why sweetly? All right, so let's see. Do a little sketch of it. See how it actually I want to stand over here. Which is gonna be more challenging. better from this angle. Well, it looks okay from this angle, too. So, I've worked out some thumbnails. I made a bunch of, you know, some really quick sketches. Now, I found the setup that I like, so now I should do... Um, oh, can't, why can't I talk and draw at the same time? A little bit more. Just trying to get the basic shapes and the lights and the darks. It's almost like if you squint at your still life or whatever you're drawing and try to really sort out the values. That could be cool. Ah! Shot it under here. So I stock it over here. Paste it so. There's another idea, which might work. Might work. So I'm going to set that one aside. I'm going to try 
another configuration. I would like to see this more like here. Like they're both reaching for the sky. I like the way the back looks. There's lots of reflected light going up into the back. They're both leaning this way now, which I don't like. That's one of the great things about setting up a still life, though, is that you can keep playing with it until you get it perfect. You don't have to put it up with somebody else's idea of composition or some photographer's idea of lighting. You can have more control over what you create. So it's ultimate control. I like the way the teeth stand out against the background there and the sharp, really jaggedy edges of the bone. Great texture. And the, the smooth torso. Whoa, you see, I like this one even better than the last one. So that's what's cool about doing the thumbnails, too, is that each time you reconsider the setup, you get closer and closer to something that's really exciting. And you want to make sure that whatever you're drawing is exciting to you because otherwise, otherwise it's boring. I mean, if I spend like 20 hours drawing this still life, I want it to look really cool so that I can have a really good time with it. And if it's, if it's just got awful boring, it'll make me miserable. Which is sort of why it's hard sometimes to be a commercial artist because... Sometimes you have to do things that are got awful boring. But if you can find the fun part in it, sometimes it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it does, does it? A little bit. Let me turn it this way. Now, I'm still having a hard time with this third item. I could just stick with a block. Oh, man. No. Help. I need I need something. You want a heart? How about that? <laughs> That's way too big. And that you can't tell it's a heart because the lighting is bad. Mm. Well, oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Um, okay, let's alter that a little bit because that's a little too. Now he's embracing it. Now the skull is embracing the torso. <laughs> I just need something in the foreground. Because you've got to have three objects. If you don't have three objects, it looks really silly. Help! <laughs> Without the torso? Oh no, I gotta have the torso in there. I could do one with this square, but I like the torso. In the back behind the skull. Why the square? Because that's, that's order? Yeah, I do. But I'm just wondering why that object. 
A square would give us order. Ambiguous. What do you guys think? My peanut gallery is awfully quiet. Maybe a smaller block. <laughs> well, what about a sphere? Too much round stuff? <laughs> Not Siri. I don't want your Siri. All right, I had a small block that my, my cat decided to toss on the ground for me, which wasn't very nice of it. Hmm? My cat or your cat? <laughs> Where? Oh the, oh, the block. Yeah, throwing the block on the ground. I need a small, I need a medium-sized block or... How about an espresso cup? Because coffee is the root of all evil, right? Let's try let's try espresso. Let's see. No, espresso cup. What fake thing? I don't have any fake things here. They're all real. Uh, they're all totally real. Oh, here we go. <laughs> no, I got one. This one. Ah! All right. I think I've got it. By Jove, I think she's got it. See how this looks. Okay. A small cup? Does anybody care? Any any comment? I'm gonna I'm gonna actually mute you because your computer talking at me is making me nervous. But you can unmute yourself when you feel like it. You like the the coffee cup or the espresso cup? I should get the saucer for it. Maybe. I also have I also have D&D &D dice. <laughs> Which is always a, a hoot. This I think this might Oh, I also have one other little thing I could use. But the coffee cups have a significance in that they're coffee. Oh, there's a metal cup, too. Okay. So I have this, which has an interesting shape. And I have this, which is a totally different material. That's not the hmm? the metal because it's kind of different, huh? But what does metal say about plaster and bone, if anything? Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, I kind of like that, actually. That shape is kind of interesting. I might move this light. Should I have the light going into the cup a little bit? No. I like the cup going light going into the cup, but I don't like it facing the same direction as the skull. So let's see if I can change that. I need to pull this closer. That's it. I don't know. I don't know if the cup should be worship. Oh, that could be ancient Greek culture. Yeah, they didn't they weren't death worshipers or anything like that. And I did like the way the teeth stood out when I had the teeth showing more. No. I have to be super careful with the skull because it's super fragile. It really looks best when it's like this. And you get a nice little line going down the center of it, too. Ah, this piece is loose. So if I'm going to use my viewfinders. Crop it in pretty tight. Hmm. Yeah, that catches a little bit of light, but now they're. I always think that maybe this is the most boring part, but sometimes it's just interesting to try to get a sense of composition, because if so, that's just really critical in, in a good piece of work, it's the composition. You can make or break it. I'm going to try that one. Try one more time. You know, I liked it best when the teeth, when you could when there was light on the teeth. So I guess I'm going to push it back again. 
I'll have to do something about this. I don't like this here, but I'll have to change that at a different time. But I liked it when I could see the teeth. Maybe I should get rid of the cloth. You know, when you see it, you'll see it, and you'll go, yes, that's it. Well, this uh, other side of the this, of this skull doesn't have um, a full eye socket. Or a lower jawbone. So I really like the side with the jawbone on it. Yeah, the teeth are totally awesome. Now it looks like they're dancing. I just need, if I could just have one more object that wasn't intrusive, that would be pretty much ideal. Yeah, it covers up too much of the bone. Uh, I have run out of ideas. You just might have to do the dice. They just, they're so small that... Whoa! <laughs> but they're blue. And only people that play D&D &D would get the significance of them, right? Because they're odd-shaped. No, oh, I think that's, that's totally fine, actually. No, that's an even number, and an even number is bad. Yes. It's time for bed. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now, how about the numbers? You can't see the numbers, but I can see the numbers. The numbers might have some significance. Letters. I don't know, they're backwards. Printing could be interesting thought. No, no, it's it's an interesting thought. No. 
I don't think the bronze eagle. Pardon? Michael's head? No, I don't want to draw Michael. I'm tired of drawing Michael. Let's try that. Hmm? A knife? A knife would be cool. Do you have one handy? A cool one? There is that. I have a actually that one upstairs on my dresser with the bronze handle, the old looking one. All right, let's try just sketching this real quick. I think maybe just a sphere, not necessarily sitting on anything might might work. Yeah, or th this. This is cool. Hmm? No. But the case isn't as pretty as the. I, I, I don't like the sheath. I like the knife though. If I could stick it into the. Into the. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have to sketch it and see. I have to sketch it and see how I feel about it. Oh, Joe, what do you think? Joe's Joe's still here. He's a professor, so he should be able to give me some good insight. Maybe the one does need to that's missing a wing. I'd have to put a candle in it. I think Could be the eternal struggle of life and death, right? No. <laughs> no. No. What do you guys think? Prominent center circle in the still life. You mean the? Are you talking about the platform that it's sitting on, Joe? Because it doesn't. It, it that doesn't have to be. It's just a surface. This here. That circle. It's the eye socket. Oh, this was this was oh. <laughs> it there was a there was a circle in here. There was a sphere in there and then I took the sphere out. Hmm? 
And it goes through there. Um, I don't want to deal with the flower. If we had a... Mm, yes. But I don't know if it'll show up. I have I had a black sphere sphere. Oh here it is. I could put it on a white and have a black sphere. Well, what does that mean? I want it to mean something. Maybe I should use a cloth. <sighs> Hierarchy of objects, large, less large, and small, subdominant. Yeah, I mean, we can go back to the... Well, I, that's why the... the um, I actually, if I'm going to do something like that, I think probably the best thing is to go back to the shell. Well, of course. Yeah probably are competing, but I kind of like the symmetry of the, all right, so I'll take this, I'll take, well, uh, this is what, what Rafi was suggested I do, is take this guy out. But that totally changes it. Um. Mm. I want to keep it simple. Hmm. The red cup is pretty cool. <laughs> I could put liquid in it, and that would make it even more interesting. Or what if I put it on the square? That adds a lot of interesting red. Yeah, it adds some interesting reflected light. Oh, I was there a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't really get away. My mom was a little demanding. But I'll be coming back out again. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, but I'll be back out because I have to go and see my mom more often now. She's being being a mom, you know. No, oh, too static. Glass somehow got chipped. I hope I didn't just do that. Um, let me put some liquid in there. Parched. <laughs> Call it parched. All right, just I just need one more thing though. I still am back to the two things, and I need one. I need three things. 
your candle holder. The crystal candle holder. I'll put a candle in there. A white one. Yeah, just just grab yeah, any one's fine. Small one. A small one. Give me a small one. Yeah. Or maybe I'll use the brass one, candle holder. The clear is cool, but it does kind of disappear. And that does give us two glass things. So I think brass might be the ticket. The burned out candle, the liquid. I wish I could tone down this light. It's too strong. I need a dimmer on it. Yeah, something. Not that I'm seeing the camera. Actually, I do it down here. That might work. I just got to kind of hook the camera too. the detritus of making art. I could even light the candle at some point. Oh, that's super interesting, that reflection. I've come up now. I've gone completely into a different a different realm. That's a little bit better. Okay, <laughs> that's a nice setup. I'm not gonna off with straw. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. I'm almost done. I'm almost ready. Okay, let's try that one. No, go away. The cat. Yes, the cat has re has returned. Emily, don't even think about it. I swear, cat, if you if you knock over my still life, you are a dead cat. Oh, now it's covering up the teeth. Oh, man, this is killing me. Here we 
you're going to be one dead cat. Now, I don't know if it's okay for the candle to not be overlapping, but maybe it is. Let's try that. I'm going to sketch that and see what it looks like. Cat? Oh, my God. Emily, I'm going to kill you. That's what I get for having seven cats, right? Okay. Whoa, baby. Baby in my ear. She's behind my monitor now. kind of cool that this goes like the way that the horn it kind of goes like from all right all right <laughs> you'll have to mute it <laughs> I, I am i'm too old for babies i did my share so i kind of like this 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 thing going on here there's some interesting needs to be taller proportionately. And I like the way that you can see that well I can see the brow over the it's really more like this is my exact point of view. More like that. Because I'm standing. I think that works. <laughs> Musicality. Okay. I think that's I think that's it. We're gonna stick with that. I'm going to just put this in the back. I don't know what to do about the handle le leaning off the edge of the board there, but maybe later I'll lift it up and put another board underneath it so it's flat underneath. Okay. Oh, that's okay. I'm just, you know, this is just process. It's I think it's really important for for the whole process of making art to be involved. You know what I mean? All right, so now I will do a, oh, you're leaving in four minutes, huh? Now I will do a photo. I think I've just committed to uh, standing for the entirety of this particular exercise. All right. So while that is the live webcam, which is all very well and good,
this is the point of view. Lots of downloads. Oh, there they are. Emily, you're treading on thin ice there, girl. Oh. So you can see how much that light is washing it out in the camera. And I don't know how to control the camera, um, the camera's take on it, fortunately. Oops. Okay, it's a little confusing, but there. Memento Mori for animals? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. That's the scene. That's my complex still life. I shall do a sketch of it. Pardon? Oh, Randy. I don't know if I, if I know who Randy is. Do I know you, Randy? All right, so I'm going to use my um, my viewfinder to help me crop that in. I'm going to lose that part of that horn, I think. It's going to be in almost a square. It might, I wonder if that will be bad to lose that part of the horn and square it in like this. I really like the shape of the horn going across the, from the candle to the over here thing. <laughs> All right. So one last sketch. And I'll, I actually, I'll scan all my sketches and throw them up in the classroom with this dreadfully boring long video. In case any, well, nobody from the class is here, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I like the echoing horns. I like the red glass. I've always wanted to use that glass on something. Emily, watch it fester. You don't see her. She's just barely off the camera. I think she wants to chew on those bones. You were going to be in so much trouble. <laughs> Probably.
Rafi, help. Got my spray bottle. She comes near me again. <laughs> Stupid cat. Okay, here's the eye socket. Here is the teeth. And here's the candle. And here's the bottom of this glass. Here's the bottom of this. I just, I think this is the best part of the whole thing, is this right here. Although this has its benefits too. Hey, who's there? Randy who? Randy, oh, Con, oh, Con Francisco. How are you doing? You finally got all your stuff sorted out? Hang on, um, let me finish this and, and I'll stop the recording. Because uh, I'm recording right now, and this is this is the setup for my complex still life that I'm going to draw for as a project example. So that would be the the next the next part of it. I went through many iterations until I found the one that I really liked. Okay. I was probably going to be stopping in a few minutes because it's getting late, but I wanted to um, get my setup set. And then I'll draw it again. You're the only one from my observational drawing class that's shown up. <laughs> no, it's not. It's terrible. I wish that everyone would come. So every, anybody who's left, do you guys want me to send you, Brittany, James, Lori, do you want me to send you a picture, the, the picture of the still life here, if you want to play around with it, even though you should set up your own still life to draw from? It's kind of a, might be a cool thing to, okay, cool. I will do that. All right. That is, uh, I'm going to make this a square. I've got a square canvas. I think I'll paint it. I think I'll actually do a painting because it's got color in it. And I'll stop this for now. I have to learn 